Or I'll tell you what, let's just go into, take that video out and put in 2001. And we'll start from the beginning. I'm going to show you how they communicate all the time and it goes right over our heads. We don't understand it. We don't know it. We miss it. How many of you saw the movie 2001? How many of you understood what you saw? You understood it? What? Give me the message. Pardon? Yeah. Okay. Good. You got it. But the rebirth was what? As a new race in the new age. And the message was, if you can't make this quantum leap, you can't be a part of it. That was the symbol of the baby floating in space. The birth of the new root race going into the new age. And if you can't make this quantum leap and understanding that we're showing you in this movie, you can't be a part of it. You will be exterminated, rounded up, put in prison camps, used as slave labor, executed, whatever. We'll try to get some use out of you, but you cannot be in the new age with us. The new dawn, the rebirth of humanity. You starting to get the message? Are you really? Because if you don't, you have no idea how important this is. If you don't, you're lost. You won't even understand what happens and why it's happening to you. Yes, sir? What do you mean by root race? Have you studied the writings of Blavatsky or any of the New Age religion, which will be the new religion of the One World Order? You need to. Everybody says, I'm not going there. It's New Age stuff. That's the work of the devil. I'm not reading that because it's not Christian. If you don't read it, how are you going to understand it? How are you going to know how to fight the enemy if you don't know who the enemy is or what they believe? You've got to. Okay, back it up. It starts with the MGM lion. <laughs> The lion is the symbol of what? The king, the ruler. Okay, here we go. Watch this carefully. Remember, Osiris, Isis, Apollo goes across the heaven in the chariot. Osiris rode across the heavens in the boat of Isis. You're going to see it here in a moment. All of the symbology is going to be played out in front of you. Watch carefully. Who is Lucifer? How out there fallen for heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. What is the son of the morning? Horus, being reborn as his father Osiris, right? Actually, Hyrus, Osiris being reborn as his own son, um, Horus. It's also played out in the Lion King when the little lion looks into the pond and sees his father staring back at him in his own reflection. There it is. There's Osiris riding across the boat of Isis. Isis is the moon. Osiris is the sun. Isis reflects the pure light of her master. Check it out. And here is what? The earth bathed in darkness. The home of the profane. So you all just thought that was pretty, didn't you? Oh, that's cute. Gee. <laughs> These guys are real artists. They made some cute stuff in the beginning. It's really neat. It means something. They're showing you the mystical intercourse between the sun, the phallus of Osiris, and the moon, Isis which produces the full body of initiates, the adepts, the Illuminati. The Illuminati have a god of light. Hi, sweetheart. Then the 2001 means something. Annie, would you come and get baby? I have to do this, okay? Please. 
I'm sorry, honey, I can't pick you up right now. Now this is all symbolic. Here, what do you see? The golden dawn. This is the dawn of the golden age. The dawn of man. There's nothing here. Some clouds, some ground, no green stuff growing. You can hear some insects begin to make their presence known. You see it's just mostly just a vast desert. The sun rises higher and what happens? You see things beginning to materialize. Trees, shrubs, some grass is growing. There is the phallus. The generative force is at work. You hear the wind blowing. When the wind blows, it signifies an age is passing, a long period of time. But the Spirit is moving upon the waters. That's the way the Bible would say it. Here, they say it with the wind. A long period of time is passing. Things are happening. Animals come and go and they leave their traces behind them. These are epochs. And then this little creature appears upon the scene. He's a peaceful little fellow. He eats nuts and roots and berries and plants. He lives peacefully side by side with the animals that he will later kill and eat. But now it's the age of innocence. It's the Garden of Eden. Nobody's killing anybody here. They all live peacefully together. Occasionally you'll see some grunts when somebody tries to eat what somebody else is eating, but that's about it. And it's daytime, it's peaceful, everything is cool. You can see. Even then, man instinctively knew that life came from the sun. Without the sun there would be no life. And you'll see the bones, which is the symbol that things live and things die, and this goes on for a while. Life is played out. That's about as violent as it gets. And then something develops toward the sunset. See? It's getting darker. The sun is going down toward the horizon. Carnivores enter the picture and begin to prey on man. And it's always toward the sunset that this dangerous time occurs because when do animals hunt? In the evening and in the night. The sun is setting now, the shadows are growing long. They go down to get their drink of water before they retire to their cave for the night. They're peaceful. Nice little fellers, they don't sound too sweet, but then, you know, sometimes when I'm a little bit irritable, neither do I. Danger. The element of danger that man could not face. Man was pretty helpless in that state. Man doesn't have big long teeth and claws. Now here they are, and another group comes, strangers, oh my god, they're just like us, but they're strangers. They might even be of a different race, right? Look, they even look different. Isn't it true that if somebody looks different than you, and you don't know anything about them, you get kind of a little uneasy when they come around you? That's the root of hatred between the races. See, they're all bluster and bluff. Nobody's hurting anybody. They say, we're here first, we're drinking. Yeah, but you had your drink, get out, we want to drink. Well, why can't we drink together? Because you don't look like me, you sucker. And back and forth and back and forth. And so they go away and let the other guys drink. 
That's about as violent as it ever got. In the age of innocence, living with nature. But it was dangerous. That's supposed to be the golden age? Yeah, the age of innocence is the golden age. When man lived in concert with nature. When things got out of balance, nature took care of it. Sun is setting, the leopard has its kill, man retreats into a place of safety, which represents the womb, goes in the cave, the womb, there's the womb. While he's in the womb, evolution is taking place. It's also nighttime. What happens at night time? Huh? Monsters come out. Gets dark, doesn't it? What happens when it gets dark? You get scared if you can't see what's going on around you. And if you were these guys, you'd have reason to be, wouldn't you? Anybody who says they never got scared in the dark is full of crap. It's the normal state of things. Most of us big guys aren't supposed to admit it, though are we? They're in there. They're scared. They're all huddled together. In just a minute you'll see another symbol. One of them is holding a baby. Look at that. See that little feller? See that little baby? Something is coming of this. Evolution is occurring. Comes the first rays of the golden dawn. A new epoch is being born. There they are all sleeping. Now you're going to hear something. Listen carefully. What is it? He hears it. Uh-oh. Something's going on, man. I don't know what's happening. It's light outside. Not supposed to be dangerous anymore. This is weird. Hear that? What is it? Bees. Another symbol of the mystery schools. What does it represent? What is this? That's a monolith. It is the black stone of foundation. The stone of foundation that was here from the beginning. The Bible talks about it. The mysteries talk about it. There is a reproduction of it in the meditation room of the United Nations building. It is represented by obelisks. It is the generative force. It is the symbol of the truth. It is the symbol of the gift here of intellect to man in his primitive state by Satan. When this little fellow gets up enough guts, he's going to touch it. And he will be imparted intelligence. Bill, is that also called the Philosopher's Stone? The Philosopher's Stone, no, is, the perfect, is, is, a, is a symbol for the perfection of the human race. That's what they're working toward the discovery of the Philosopher's Stone, which is the perfection of the human race. Here he goes. Oh! I can think! See, I, I've heard so many explanations for this from people who didn't understand the movie. Oh, I was extraterrestrials! Well, what were they doing? Well, I don't know, but it was extraterrestrial, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, really? Tell me some more. This is the stone of foundation. The smooth black stone that you will also find in the upper entertainment area of the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. How many of you have been there? How many of you have seen up in the entertainment level that shiny, smooth, black wall that reflects everything? That's it. Bill, 
I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about, and I don't have time to do it now. <laughs> okay, man now has been imparted the gift of intellect. Let's see how he uses it. Let's see how smart we are. What do you think he's going to do? First thing man's going to do with his newfound ability is kill somebody. Hooray. Here he is. Oh, look at that. That's the temple of initiation. You can see the God of illumination rising above it. What is the capstone of the temple? The master mason, the initiate. He is now the first priest, the master of the lodge. He sits in the east. And he holds the power of knowledge that no one else has. He has the first original thought. He is the first priest, the first king, and the first power upon earth. Outside of the natural realm of the forces of nature. Whoa, did you see that? You know what he's thinking? I'm God. That's what he's thinking. I'm God. I'm God. I have the power. I am the leader. Don't mess with me because I know something that you don't know. I can think. Comes even tide. What's he eating now? Doesn't look like veggies to me. He's eating meat. He's learned how to kill his neighbors that he used to live peacefully with. The buzzing of the bees, folks, is the symbol of unity. Society, social evolution. You'll see it everywhere the mystery school exists. You'll see it all over the state of Utah. The Mormon church was founded upon the mysteries. The Mormon church in the secret initiatory rites of the temple practices the mysteries. Joseph Smith was a Freemason, so was Brigham Young. If you're a Mormon, I don't mean any disrespect or insult, but for me, you get the truth. How you deal with it is your business. What's the representation here, folks? One group has evolved and the other one has not. One was the hunter, one ate veggies. What is the metaphor? Cain and Abel. One sacrificed meat upon the altar, the other ate veggies. Sacrificed vegetables, right? Cain slew his brother Abel. Isn't it amazing when you find out that movies mean something more than what you thought they meant? How many of you sat transfixed and watched this and thought, oh, well, this is neat? You know, didn't have the slightest clue. Well, the first time I saw it, I didn't because I wasn't as smart as I am now. And then I'm willing to admit it. 
Took me years before I understood enough about the mysteries and their symbology to understand what it was I was watching in this movie. Now watch this. The mind of man evolved. The priesthood hoarded and protected the knowledge until eventually they could produce a space station which floated in space. Can you produce a space station that can float in space? Well, with the help of the secret technology of the guardians of the secret of the ages and the buzzing of the bees, you can. If you're an initiate, if you're given the power, if you have the knowledge of the symbology, if you have the support of the fraternity, the brotherhood of man, you too can do great things. Haven't you ever wondered why some people who aren't even smart at all go so far in life and you who toil and work and slave and are six times smarter than them can't get to first base? You're not a member of the club. They're not going to pull you up. They're going to slap you down. They're going to pull their brother up. Once you understand the extent of my knowledge, you'll then understand why they hate me so bad that they tell you such bad things about me that you really come to these things thinking you're going to see some kind of monster until you find out who I really am. Why haven't they gone through with their symbology and created the real things? The space station and stuff, why have they stopped? The How do you know they haven't? They don't tell you everything. <laughs> You're going to find out today that most of the photographs that NASA has ever shown you are fake. Okay, we don't need to go any farther than this, with this. It goes on to show man in this journey of but through space. Is it about space? No, it's about man. Who survived? Huh? This was about the survival of the fittest of the human race. Who is worthy of being accepted into the new age? The man who had the greatest knowledge. The man who could survive against all the odds. Who was Hal? Hal was a computer. What did Hal represent? the technology of man that he created through his knowledge. It was telling us, hey, we're reaching a point where we have to stop this insane advancement of technology. Because we've reached the point that the public doesn't even know yet, in secret, we have created things that can destroy us all. And on the spaceship, could you believe they built this big computer to run this spaceship and they didn't have an off switch? There's no switch to turn this thing off. And this machine interpreted the actions of the astronauts as being against the mission that the machine was assigned to perform and it began killing off the astronauts. And by the time they realized it, it was too late, there was nothing they could do, and he searched high and low for a switch. There was no switch to turn this thing off. He had to crawl up in the machine and, and cut wires and pull out circuit boards and all kinds of stuff, and he luckily made it before the machine got to him. H-A-L. Advance them one letter of the alphabet, what is it? IBM. Were they talking about the IBM Corporation? No. But what was the symbol of technology at that time? Computers. IBM. Right? What happened to him when he reached Jupiter? What did he see floating out in space? The stone of foundation. He went out and looked at it. He found a way to look inside of it and what did he see? He said it. Another universe. Inside this stone of foundation, there was another universe. A whole other universe. He began to develop the mental mindset, what they call
What do they call it? Huh? A paradigm shift in his consciousness representing the paradigm shift that is expected of all who are going to progress and go into the new age together. All of this stuff about him laying there and then looking up and seeing himself in the doorway and then looking in the mirror and growing older and all of this kind of stuff, that was his confrontation between himself to make this paradigm shift where he was reborn See, he represented humanity. He wasn't a person at all. He represented humanity. He was reborn as the first of the new root race, floating as an infant in space. Now, we jump to 2010. Remember that movie? He comes back in spirit and talks to the next dude, doesn't he? Who says, is that you, Frank? It's me. What happened to you? Something wonderful. Bullshit. This wasn't a message to you. It was a message to the adepts of the world, telling them that the fruition of their great plan is coming into being. And that this is what they're going to have to do. It must be a rebirth of humanity. A new world order. What was 2010 all about? It told you how this new world order is going to come about, didn't it? Didn't it show you that? Instead of being separate nations and having a cold war, we're going to come together, aren't we? And we're going to make this giant leap together through space, which represents what? Humanity together as one, conquering the odds, preventing them from going into their new world order. So the Russians and the Americans and the rest of them on board this spaceship, they do that, don't they? When they get up there, they find the old ship. They re-energize Hal, who's willing to sacrifice himself so that they can get away, now that Hal understands. <laughs> and they see the stone of foundation appears again and starts to multiply where? Across the face of Jupiter. And they're skedaddling out of there, because what's going to happen? Jupiter explodes and becomes another sun. And the children of the first sun meet the children of the two sons. Children of the one sun meet the children of the two sons. There was a movie about that, wasn't there? How many of you saw that movie? They communicate in this manner all the time. But it's all about the creation of their new consciousness, their paradigm shift, the new world order, the destruction of the old, the disintegration into chaos out of which will come the new order, ordo ab chao. That is the motto of the 32nd degree of Freemasonry. They have it written on everything, their buildings, their lodges, their books, their badges, their pins, everything. You think it means nothing? Ordo ab chao. To get the new world that they need, they must destroy the old. The phoenix must be reborn out of the ashes. What do you think Clinton was talking about when he said, We will watch the sun set, and we are preparing our children for the new dawn. Do you get it yet? Does everybody get it? Do you understand it? Is anybody here who doesn't? Okay, you all get the William Cooper School of Symbology Diploma. <laughs> I'm glad you got it, because it is so important that you get it and that you understand it and that you know what's happening. Because if you don't, you're helpless. You're just another person in the long line of refugees with a dead body beside the road. And you don't want to be that. Right? Yes, sir. The computer that without the off switch, is that symbolic of the unchecked intellect? Yes. In other words, the foundation of everything is intellect built upon intellect. That's right. Denial of any uh, God, spirit, or anything like 
They want to really, literally, return to what they call the golden age. But they don't want to do it with the risks involved. They want to go to a simpler life where technology and the intellect and learning and knowledge is controlled by them. And the rest of us just sort of live like children in their care. Socialism, that's what it is. It's what socialism is. You give up all your rights, you give up everything, you agree to accept my rules for you, and I'll take care of you. In other words, we want the whole human race to stop being adults. You become children again, we will be your daddy. We are the only truly mature minds, and thus are the only ones who are rightfully endowed to rule. You're just profane cattle. We'll allow you to live if you'll do it on our terms. And if you won't, we're going to get rid of you. You're going to make that paradigm shift or we're going to kill you, knock you off, use you for slaves until you die, whatever. We'll get some use out of you if we can. And if we can't, we'll just simply eliminate you. That's their plan.